Hi, and welcome to video one of two videos for section 3.1. In chapter three, we're gonna be looking at inverse functions, specifically the exponential, the log, and the inverse trig functions. In section 3.1, we're looking at the exponential function. So in general, an exponential function is a function of the form f of x is equal to a to some exponent x, where a is a positive constant. So generally speaking, if we're talking about an exponential function, we're talking about some value raised to a power x or a function of x. Also, when we have a to the x, this is equal to the limit as r approaches x of a to the r, r power. So if I have this a to the x, what I'm really saying is that as some value r approaches x, it gets me to this function. And again, a is a positive constant, actually a positive number, and r is rational. We do this, why? Because we could have like 2 to the square root of 2 power. Well, square root of 2 is not rational, but Remember when we're talking about limits, we're not actually talking about that exact point. We're talking about the value that it gets as r approaches that value. So by defining it like this, we can say that this works essentially for any exponential function we have because we're only talking about the limit as it goes to that point. So recall the laws of exponents. The first one is if I have a to the x plus y power, and these go both ways. So this is what? This is a to the x times a to the y. So by saying it goes both ways, if I had whatever, a to the third power times a to the fifth power, that's the same as a to the three plus five, or a to the eighth. So you can either break it apart or you can put them together. If I have a to the x minus y, well this is a to the x over a to the y power. Third law I have is that a to the x all raised to the y power is the same as a to the x times y. So it's a little different from one, so be careful with that. I have two values with the same base multiplied by each other, I can just add their exponents. But if I just have one base with two different exponents, I would multiply them. And the fourth one is that if I have two numbers, a, b, all raised to the x power, this is the same as a to the x times b to the x. I can bring that exponent, or I would have to bring that exponent into each number. Some calculus here with some limits. So we have that if a is greater than 1, then the limit as x goes to infinity of a to the x 
So think about what's happening here. If A is bigger than 1, let's say this is 10. So as x goes to infinity, that means 10 to the infinity power is what? Well, that's infinity. Positive. And the limit as x goes to negative infinity of a to the x. So that would mean what? That means that I have some number to a negative exponent. And what happens when I have a negative exponent? It becomes a reciprocal, right? So I really have, this is like 1 over a to the x power as x goes to infinity. So as the bottom gets really, really, really big, what happens? This whole thing goes to 0. And I also have that if a is a fraction, positive fraction, between 0 and 1, then, and they basically just switch on us. So the limit as x goes to infinity of a to the x, so let's say it's 1 half. So 1 half to the infinity power, well, that becomes real, real, real small, which is what? We say that it approaches 0. And the reverse happens here. So the limit as x goes to negative infinity of a to the x. So again, because it's a negative, so if we had 1 half as our value for a, I have to take the reciprocal. So that now becomes the reciprocal of a half, which is 2. So 2 to the infinity power blows up on us. So this goes to positive infinity. So let's use that idea, look at an example. So two parts here. The first part, we want to find the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 to the minus x minus 1. And part b, is I want to sketch what does this guy look like? y is equal to 2 to the minus x minus 1. So the solution for part A. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite that 2 to the minus x. So this is really what? It's the limit as x goes to infinity of. So 2 to the minus x, if I want that exponent to be positive, I have to take the reciprocal. So 2 over 1 becomes 1 over 2, all to the positive exponent, x minus 1. And now if I take the limits, I apply the limit separately to each one. So this is what? This is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 half to the x minus the limit as x goes to infinity of 1. So now we use what we learned here. So our a is a fraction between 0 and 1. And as we go to infinity, that means this whole first piece goes to 0. And the limit of any number, no matter what x is going to, is just that number, which is negative 1. So the limit of the 2 to the minus x minus 1 approaches negative 1 as x approaches infinity. So if we sketch this, part b, so what is that negative 1? Well, that negative 1 is basically a horizontal asymptote. As x goes to positive infinity, the, uh, the function is going to get very, very close to negative 1. So way out here, we're at roughly negative 1. When x is 0, 2 to the 0 power is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So this thing is actually going through the origin. And then as x becomes a big negative number, this thing does what? It goes to infinity. So the sketch of this curve would look something like that, with negative 1 being our horizontal asymptote, basically. So that's the first video, short and sweet. Just sort of a reminder of what is the exponential function, what are some of the laws that apply, and then in terms of the limit, applying some of our calculus to it, what happens depending on if the number is
greater than one or a positive fraction. So come on back, we'll look, uh, we'll do video two. Um, we'll look at the number E, a couple examples, and that'll wrap up section 3.1.